Hello, my name is Toby Ollier and I'm a puppetry director and designer. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make something that I made pretty much every weekend of my childhood. A cardboard puppet theater with cardboard puppets. So why don't I show you what you're gonna to need to make it. Now first off and most importantly, you're gonna need the template. It includes um, the theater itself and two sets of uh, puppets and scenery. Um, you can find out where to download that from uh, in the video's description. You're gonna need a sharp pencil to puncture some holes. Um, you're gonna need uh, some puppet control rods. I've got kebab sticks here, uh, but you could use pencils or chopsticks, uh, anything like that. You're gonna need some string to give some of your puppets joints and uh, to maybe hang some of your scenery. Uh, you're gonna need some tape. I'm gonna use masking tape because it's easier for you to see on camera but you sellotape works just fine. Um, some scissors to cut things out. You're gonna need some cardboard to stick your pattern pieces onto. Um, I've got sort of gray board here, which I bought from an art shop, which is kind of like cereal packet cardboard. So anything like that, anything that you can cut with scissors, but that's nice and sturdy um, to stick your pattern onto. You're gonna need some glue to stick said pattern onto said cardboard. Um, I've got different kinds here. Any of them would kind of do more kind of white graph glue or like a clear or purpose glue or a print stick um, and then you're going to need uh, pencils, paints, pens, anything to colour your pattern pieces in. So let's get started. So the first step is to stick all of the template pieces onto cardboard so they're nice and strong. Uh, the theatre itself is four pages and then each set of puppets and scenery is two pages each so you, you don't have to print off both if you don't want to. Um, both sets of puppets and scenery are inspired by uh, childhood obsessions of mine, the first being dinosaurs, the second being under the sea uh, mermaids. Um, so I'm going to stick all of these pages down onto cardboard. Next up is a fun bit, uh, you get to colour in all of your pattern pieces. Um, I'm a bit of a tra traditionalist, so I'm going to go for a kind of ready gold Victorian proscenium arch on my theatre. Um, you don't need to colour in these bits necessarily because they're going to be sort of hidden at the sides, so you can leave those blank. Similarly, on your puppets and pattern pieces, you don't have to colour in the little kind of wedge shapes because they're going to be stuck behind your scenery. But yeah, let your imagination go crazy. Okay, now everything is coloured in. The next step is to cut it all out. That is going to take some time, but be patient. Um, don't cut any dotted lines. We're going to leave those. You can cut these little thin lines here because they're going to be tabs that you fold apart. Um, and you can cut out the square here because that's sort of the wing of your theatre. But otherwise, just cut around the outside of everything. Okay, so that was a bit of a workout. So uh, now you've cut everything out, um, push all of the characters and scenery to one side. We'll come back to those later. And we'll start building the theatre itself. Um, so the first thing we need to do is score all of the dotted lines. You can see them on these two pieces here. And then there are quite a few on the theatre. I'll show you on the pattern because it's a bit clearer. One, two, three, four, five dotted lines on the, uh, each side of the proscenium. So to score them, what I generally do is get a ruler or something with a straight edge, and then with the sharp edge of uh, uh, the pointy kind of edge of your scissor, um, press down nice and firmly, and then that way you create a sort of bias. So it means you can fold the cardboard nice and neatly. It doesn't crease it, it doesn't wrinkle it, it, it has nice angles in it. Um, so you want to do that to both of those sides. I did this one just before. Those angles there. And then on the theatre itself, once you've scored all the lines, which I've already done, you need to fold them in different directions. So these uh, inside two, so this one, the kind of smaller inside dotted lines, you want to fold them um, like they're a, va a valley fold, it's called. So you fold them, uh, uh, fold the cardboard sort of away from you so you make a little valley. I'll show you. So we're folding it like that, just on these inside ones. Way, so you want to fold those inwards and then similarly you want to do a tiny little valley fold on the little tab so you want to bring that little white tab up towards you same thing on the other side little valley fold on the inside one and on that one 
similarly with that little tab, make that tab stick up towards you. Um, and then the other two dotted lines, which are, yeah, this outer one here, that one and the tall long one down there. You want to do mountain, mountain folds, which is when you basically push the cardboard towards you. Make a little mountain. This is exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, so you want to fold, let's try and do this without looking at it, there we go. So you want to fold the cardboard towards you, like so. And on this one's the same. Fold the cardboard so the kind of edge comes towards you. And again, it might kind of want to go back on itself, so just keep refreshing the valley. The first lot we did that were valleys, and the second lot that were mountain ones. Yep, 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 yep. And then gradually, the theatre proscenium starts to have a little kind of 3D shape. Uh, let me do the valley, one, uh, the mountain ones on this side. Yep. Great, great. And so these little uh, dots and that one there actually, you're going to use uh, to blob a little bit of glue and then stick this proscenium arch together. Okay, now your proscenium arch is glued together. Next step is to turn it over and you're going to stick your wing sections. I'm going to stick them grey side kind of facing inwards, can't put side inwards, but if you've got uh, bits of packaging shown you can always put them white side inwards. Um, you're going to stick them just either side in line with the bottom edge of your proscenium arch. And there you have the structure of your puppet theatre. So, put that to one side. Next step, let's go with the scenery. So, there are a couple more of these. I'm just doing these two as an example. Um, so, uh, take the little kind of stands and then score along the dotted line and then fold the little tabs in opposite directions. So make one a mountain fold and one a valley fold. Do that for each bit of scenery. Do a big stand and a little stand. So the tabs end up facing different directions. And then flip the bit of scenery over, put some glue on that outside edge of those little tabs and then press them onto your scenery so that they're not so high that they peek over the back, you want them to be nice and hidden behind. So yeah, put some glue on and attach those to all of your ground row bits of scenery. So your ground row bits of scenery have now got their stands on, they can stand up and go into the theatre. Next up we're going to look at all the characters and things. So you might have noticed that the Tyrannosaurus and the Mermaid have uh, different pieces to them. So we'll come back to them in a second show you what to do with the rest of the characters. Again, there are more of these on the template. I'm just using a few of them to show you. Um, so you can, using a kebab stick or a pencil or whatever you've chosen, you can stick your rods out the bottom or out the side of your characters and you can operate them from the side of your theatre. Um, and it's good, but you get like quite a limited thing of front and back, they can go up and down. They haven't got like a, a massive range of movement to them. So I'm a fan of doing something else with these types of paper puppets. I like, let me show you. So take two bits of tape, sort of between two and three centimeters long, and then sandwich them around the end of a kebab stick. So my stick's not running the whole length of that tape, it's sort of stopping halfway, and I'm sandwiching the end of the rod, the end of the uh, kebab stick in tape, but leaving the two sort of sticky ends of it exposed, making a bit of like a sort of capital letter T of tape. And then I'm sticking that capital letter T, the sticky ends, down onto my little 2D puppet character. And then that way, the fish, the dinosaurs or whatever, have a slightly more interesting uh, fluid range of movement than if they're just stuck on at the side and can go up and down. You kind of have a greater range of movement, which means you're kind of behind your puppets as you operate them. Um, so do the same thing to all the other uh, 2D characters that don't have any joints on them. Okay, so for the T-Rex and for the Mermaid, um, I'm going to show you how to make a little simple joint using string for these puppets. Um, but first off, on the pattern pieces, you can see there's a black dot on the T-Rex's body, the T-Rex's leg, 
and the mermaid's tail. And what you need to do is take a sharp pencil and just puncture a hole where those black dots are. Be careful of your fingers on the other side when you do this. But just, yeah, puncture a hole through. The pencil doesn't have to go all the way through, you just want it big enough to post some little bits of string through. It doesn't need to be too giant. So, I'll show you the mermaid first. So what you want to do is take a small length of string, about 15 centimetres, and you want to take a little thin bit of tape, and you want to find the middle of your piece of string, like that, and then you're going to put the tape over that centre point of the string, like that. Then take your mermaid's top half, and where you can see her waist is, imagining that's a whole circle, on the other side, stick the middle, stick the middle of the string onto the centre point of her waist. Now if your tape goes over the edge like mine has, don't worry, you can cut it or rip it or stick it back on itself. There we go. And then take those two loose ends of string and post them through the mermaid's tail. That's going to go easily. Yes it is. Very good. You post those through the tail and pull up any slack. You don't want it too tight, you don't want, but then equally you don't want lots of string in between, otherwise the joint gets too tight. So just pull in the excess string and then use another bit of tape to stick the excess string down onto the back of the mermaid's tail. And there you have a little rope joint. Now the T-Rex is a similar thing, but he's just got extra body piece. So what you do for him is the same technique. Get your string, find the middle point, put the tape on it. Now on the T-Rex's leg that doesn't have the hole on it, again imagining that sort of round end is a complete circle, stick your string into the center of that circle and take the loose ends and put them through the body first. There we go. And then through the other leg. And then again, pull in the excess string. You don't want it to be too tight, especially because you've got the body in the middle. You don't want to pin that down too much. And then just put a bit of tape over those loose bits of rope on the back of the T-Rex's leg. You can trim off the excess if you've got too much of it. And there, you've got some joints on your T-Rex's legs as well. So, like the other characters, the mermaid and the T-Rex need control rods. Um, but because they've got joints, I would put an extra rod on so you can animate them. So for the mermaid, I would put one rod on her tail. And then another rod on the back of her head and body. So that way, you can sort of steer the mermaid by holding the head rod and move her tail by using the fin rod. Now with the T-Rex, you can just put a rod on the back of the body and let the legs kind of swing and do their own thing. But to give it a bit more control, I would put a rod on the back of the body. Just be careful that tape doesn't get in the way of his legs. And stop them moving. And then put another rod using some quite sm a little bit smaller bits of tape. Put the other rod on the leg that's on the back of the T-Rex, so the leg that's nearest you when it's lying face down. Stick that rod onto there, and then that way you're able to control the back leg of the T-Rex with the rod, keep the body straight, and swing the other leg to give him a bit of a T-Rex strut. Um, so, now we've got rods and everything, it's time to put all of our characters and scenery into our theatre.